Hello everyone, my name is Brian Villasenor. And I'm Andy Santiago. And today we're going to be talking to you about academic writing and psychology. This presentation will be going through the academic writing and psychology from the perspective of research papers and dissertations. Both uh, research papers and dissertations are used in, academic, in the academic psychology community to show their work and discuss their findings. Before going into the specifics of academic writing and psychology, it's important to first acknowledge what a research paper is and what a dissertation is. Research papers are the way psychologists discuss what they did in their original studies. They're used to present empirical research for the psych psychology community and the scientific community as a whole. Ultimately, research papers are the main vehicle for the expansion of knowledge of a specific subject. Much like research papers, dissertations are used to communicate new empirical research on different subjects within psychology. However, contrary to research papers, dissertations are much more in-depth and can average around 190 pages, according to Conan Foster. Dissertations are also written with the goal of receiving a doctorate degree in psychology. Now that you have a clearer idea of what research papers and dissertations are, we will be going over what this presentation seeks to cover in terms of academic writing in psychology. This presentation will cover three main sections of academic writing in psychology. These sections include planning the paper, the structure of the papers, and the content of each individual section. In planning before, we will look we will be looking at what research proposals are, as well, the, as well as the key factors of writing the paper and using external sources. In structure, we will go over what sections are present in research papers and what, what sections are present in research papers and dissertations within psychology. Lastly, we will examine the essential writing components of each section. After going over these topics, we will summarize the main ideas within the conclusion of the presentation. Now we will be talking about the planning that goes behind writing a research paper in psychology as well as a dissertation in psychology. Planning before writing is an essential process because it ensures that the author acknowledges their audience, keeps their writing concise, and avoids mistakes. Not only that, but planning before allows for the author to think critically about their research questions. One of the first steps a researcher in psychology must take before executing a study is to write a research proposal. The research proposal includes most sections of a regular research paper and dissertation, such as an abstract, introduction, methods, and references. You may have noticed that a results section is missing from the proposal. That's because the study itself has yet to be done. However, some proposals will include the section as a hypothesized results section to show that the author has thought in depth about the research. In general, these proposals resemble a first draft of the paper and can help researchers form a base to work on. Another key aspect in writing is the validity of the paper. This means that the paper should have arg arguments and sources that are backed with evidence. Validity is important because it ensures that the paper is not only concise, but carefully reviewed as well. Like validity, internal consistency within a paper also has its place because it prevents the author from contradicting themselves within the paper. By using a uniform voice and sticking to their research question, the author ensures that their writing does not go against what they have already stated. Similar to internal consistency, presuppositions should be kept in check while writing. Presuppositions are assumptions that the writer makes without first introducing the evidence to support them. This means that the research should provide reputable sources before making claims so that the paper maintains credibility. Some final things to keep in mind before writing are the implications and the importance of arguments. Before writing, the author must consider what practical implications their research may carry, as well as 
how their research can benefit the school of thought for their subject. It's also important for the arguments of the paper to be significant enough that they provide to the discussion of the subject and not only serve to prove the author's points. The structure of the paper is important in that it provides the reader with a consistent way of obtaining information from the paper. To clarify, both psychology dissertations and research papers follow the same format. The abstract is the first section when writing the paper. The purpose of an abstract section is to give the reader a brief understanding as to what the study is about and what is what was found from the studies. Within the introduction, there is background information that answers what the study seeks to do, why it's doing it, and how it connects to the past research. It also includes an in-depth literature review. In the methods section, the researcher needs to go over how the experiment was done as they mention the materials and the procedures used. Additionally, the researchers need to describe the subjects and why they chose them. For the results section, researchers include the findings from their data collection and presents the data clearly to the reader through tables, graphs, or other representations. It includes all the data that will be analyzed in the discussion. The discussion section is an essential part of the of writing a dissertation and research paper as the researcher discusses how their hypothesis works with their data. Also, the researcher draws conclusions from their findings and presents theoretical and or practical implications. To strengthen their, the discussion, research, researchers often connect back to the literature and how it applies to their findings. Increasingly, it, all, it has become common that the, the results and discussion section are combined to improve cohesion. Lastly, appendices and references are used to list items such as tables and figures, as well as source materials from the crafting of the paper. While appendices are listed by order referred to, references are listed alphabetically. Listed on this page are an example of what a research paper looks like on the left, as well as an example of a table of contents from a dissertation on the right. You'll notice that on the table of contents, you can see how research papers and dissertations follow this format of introduction, methods, results, discussion, references, and appendices. In this section, we'll be looking at what exactly goes into each uh, section and common writing practices. Inside the abstract, the researcher gives the reader a short summary of the study with the results and its conclusions. It is important to keep this section short as it is the reader's first impression of the study. The primary objective of this section is to entice the audience with, to continue reading. While we mentioned before how the introduction should talk about what it aims to do within the study, it is also important to discuss what it will not include. This avoids any confusion about the study's scope and objectives. The introduction should also marry the study's objectives with the literature review through effective transitions. A literature review is typically done through the, the funnel method. What this means is that the researcher goes from broader to more, to more research question-specific literature in order to ease into the specificity of the question. As for the methods section, it should include easy to follow instruction such that anyone could reproduce the experiment. This section should not only include explicit instruction of the procedure, but how the data analysis was completed as well. The method section's clarity is vital because the ability to replicate the experiment aids in credi credibility of the study. In the results section, researchers commonly use a quantitative approach to data collection due to the fact that much of psychology research is empirically based. In doing so, researchers can perform a statistical analysis of their work by using items such as ANOVA or ANCOVA tables. The results section also includes tools such as tables and graphs to guarantee the clarity of their findings. Unlike the results section, the discussion section should not be reiterative of the data found, but should instead develop its meaning. The discussion section should include statistical analysis to reinforce its development, but it should refrain from using too much statistical jargon. It should also connect back to the literature review when discussing the implications of the study. 
these implications should state what the paper means for the area of focus and how it can aid at future research. It's also important that it includes limitations of the study. The appendix section differs from the reference section in that the appendix lists sources in the order that they are referred to within the paper. In general, the actual content of papers within psychology can vary greatly from subject to subject within the field, but these were the essential content components that should be within each respective section, and should also be noted that content within the paper should be able to smoothly transition from idea to idea so that the reader is not lost within the writing. A common structure for this is the A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A structure. Now that we have talked about the planning before, the structure, and the content of academic writing and psychology, we will be wrapping up with a summation of the main ideas. In planning before, it is important that the researcher writes a research proposal so that they have a foundation to work on. In addition to this, the five major factors are validity, internal consistency, presuppositions, implications, and importance of arguments. These are the these five factors ensure the credibility of the study. The structure of either the research paper or dissertation include an abstract, introduction, literature review, methods, results, discussion, appendices, and, uh, and a reference section. Lastly, in terms of content, there are many key components that should be present in each section when writing a, the psychology paper. We hope that by watching this presentation, you have a larger understanding about the planning before, structure, and content of academic writing and psychology. Also, if you notice the sources within the slides and would like to learn more, this reference slides includes citations for the material. Thanks for watching.